Hello, welcome to the functions chapter in Learn to Code. Today we're going to be working on the collect, toggle, and repeat activity inside the functions chapter. This is the third activity in the functions chapter. So um, we're going to be working more with uh, creating our own functions. If you remember from last time, we created a turn right function where we took um, the idea that three turn lefts can be thought of as the same action as a turn right, and we created a function out of that. So, in fact, all the commands we've used up to this point, like move forward, turn left, collect gem, toggle switch, these are all functions created by the authors of, of our Swift Playgrounds, and they're there for us to use. We use them by typing in the function name with the set of param uh, parentheses attached to the end of it. But we learned last time that we can make our own functions that we can use in our programs also. So in this activity, we're going to make a, uh, a combine a bunch of simple commands like move forward, collect gem, toggle switch, and so on to make a more complicated function that we can use to make our program uh, a lot simpler. Many programming uh, problems really come down to trying to identify a repeating pattern. And once you identify that repeating pattern, you can then put that repeating pattern in a function and then call that function some number of times, however many times you need it to repeat. Okay. So in this puzzle here, let's look at it and see if we can find uh, a repeating pattern. We'll just kind of scroll, again, pan with our finger to look around at this puzzle. And the first thing you might notice is that it appears that as Byte travels around this square, he's going to encounter a gem and then a switch. And then on this side of the square, the rectangle, it's going to be a gem and a switch again. And on this side, another gem and a switch. And then on this side, another gem followed by a switch. So that's definitely a repeating pattern where we're going to want to collect the gem, move forward, and uh, toggle the switch. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that inside our function to start off with. Um, we could give this function a name. Remember to write our own function. We use the keyword func, and then you give it a name. And the name of this might be, oh, we could call this um, uh, move, move, collect, and switch. Move, collect, and switch. Okay. Uh, so inside here, we can then, we said we, we, one thing we're going to want to do in this function is definitely uh, collect the gem and toggle, move forward, and then toggle the switch. Collect gem and move forward toggle the switch. And actually, before we collect the gem and uh, move forward and toggle the switch, um, we might be able to move forward to get to the gem. Okay, so we might be able to move forward to get to the gem. Let's look at each side here. So here we can move forward, collect gem, move forward, toggle switch. On this side, if we start right here, we can move forward, collect gem, Move forward, toggle switch. And on this side, we can also move forward, collect gem, move forward, toggle switch. And same thing for this side. Move forward, collect gem, move forward, toggle switch. So we can put that as part of our function as well. Before we collect the gem, we can add a move forward. Okay. Uh, is that all we can put in here? Uh, we'd like to make this as take up as much of the repeating part of our puzzle as we can. So if there's more we can add to this, we should definitely do this. How about at the end, after we toggle switch? Well, after you toggle the switch here, you're going to move forward again. So uh, that would mean that we'd have a move forward, collect gem, move forward, toggle switch, and another move forward. Let's see if we have an open space after every switch in, on each side of this. 
There's one here. So that can take a move forward. There's one here. That can take a move forward. And there's one here, too. So good. Uh, we can add that to our function as well. After we toggle switch, we'll add a move forward in here. OK. So now this function is going to uh, basically do, um, I'm going to highlight on the screen uh, everything that's taken care of on each row. So this row will take care of this much. On this row, it'll take care of this much. On this row, it'll take care of this much. And on this row, all this is taken care of. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and let's just try one a call one call to move collect and switch just to see what it does here. Move collect and switch. Notice how our function move collect and switch showed up as one of the choices here. So let's run this and see uh, if byte does one um, one call to move collect and switch. Make sure it's all working okay. Great. So by the time he's done with this side of the rectangle, he's got one gem and he's taken care of toggling one switch, all with just one call to move, collect, and switch. Let's add another one. Move, collect, and switch. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to need to turn, have byte turn to the left, right? Correct. So here we go. Let's try it and see what happens. Great. Now, um, to go ahead and go down to the next row, we're going to want to add here a move forward so that he goes down the stairs move forward, and then a turn left, and then a call to our function to take care of uh, most, whoops, to take care of most of the rest of our row. Move, collect, and switch. Okay, I'm going to try this. I'll run it a little faster. Good. One more row, and we'll get there by simply turning left, and move, collect, and switch. And that should take care of this last row. Uh, let's go ahead and run it. All right, that wasn't so bad. So all the time it took us to create a nice function called move, collect, and switch, where we grouped all the repeating parts of this, uh, of this puzzle into one function, so we had to call it then four times. We called it here, then we turn left. We called it here, then we move forward and turn left. Then we call it here, then we turn left, and we call it one more time. So each one of those basically takes care of most of one of those rows. So imagine how much longer our program would have been if we had to repeat all the commands in this function, these one, two, three, four, five commands, instead of just calling move, collect, and switch. Each move, collect, and switch represents these five commands being called. Okay. In fact, we should uh, go ahead and maybe run this one time watching uh, watching the, sorry, I'm going to have it step through my code and run it again. And uh, let's start it over again. So I'll start it over again, stepping through the code. Okay, first thing that happens is we call move, collect, and switch. And that does a move forward, collect gem, move forward, toggle switch, move forward. And we turn left and we call move, collect, and switch again. 
It does all of its things inside there. Then we call move forward, turn left, and then we call our function again. Move, collect, and switch. It does all the commands in there. When it's done with this, it's going to go back to where it left from. Yep, turn left. And one final time, move, collect, and switch. All right, very nice. So just a reminder, it's a useful goal to try to create functions so that our main program is relatively short. So here we have a relatively short main program. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, only eight lines in our main program. Uh, and we were able to do that because we took out much of the work and put it into this function up here, move, collect, and switch. But even more important than um, trying to write uh, a short main program is trying to write one that's easy to read and easy to understand. Okay, And I think by having uh, this function move, collect, and switch, uh, it makes our main program a little bit easier to understand than if we had all those commands uh, listed in there one by one. Okay, uh, we'll see you next time.